So now what we need to do is create smoke that comes out of this. So let's go into Houdini and create some smoke that we can spawn to come out of this lightning strike. So let's set up the smoke in Houdini. Let's make a geo node. And let's name it smoke. Next, let's put down a pyro burst source. So let's take the initial size and set it to 0.5. Let's do... Then let's set the spread angle to 20, the number of trailings to 50. Let's take the roundness to 1. And let's change the trailing length to 0.5 and the trailing thickness to 0.5 as well. Let's also set this to front view. Let's put down a transform. Let's rotate this 90 degrees so it faces the camera. Zoom in a bit. Let's turn on our velocity. Now let's go into the burst animation and let's set this to 8 frame duration and an overall expansion of 4. Actually, let's set that to 10 and 5. Now under the now under the shape offset Let's take that and let's change this to, let's try nine. Now let's put a volume rasterize attributes. So now let's change the voxel size to 0 0.05. Let's add a velocity blur. Also check the box for source attributes. Shutter offset, let's make that negative one. And let's change the density covered scale to two. Let's add an attribute rule. Let's set it to our velocity and let's set it to accumulated. All right, now we can bring this into our dotnet. So let's make that. Let's put down a pyro solver sparse. Now let's bring in our volume, volume source. Let's set this to first context geometry because we have it coming in here on our first context. Let's set our initialize to source fuel. And we don't have any fuel, so let's set this to our density. And we don't have temperature, so we can just get rid of that. Let's change the operation here to multiply for our velocity. Now let's get our smoke object sparse. And let's set the voxel size. We'll just keep it at 0.1 for right now. Let's go into the pyro solver and let's turn on disturbance, shredding, and turbulence. Let's look at that. Okay, it's not bad. So let's go back out here and let's look at that velocity that we have going on. Let's change that shape offset a bit. Let's try 13. I'm looking for a round shape that when we have these rotated randomly in Niagara, it's not gonna look too weird. Let's mess with this a little bit. Let's change the, right now we're fading out at about frame 60. So let's change the disturbance to 0.4 maybe. That looks about right. So now let's get this ready in a flipbook. Let's put down a dop import fields. And we need this dop net. So let's just create that or put that in there. And then we need that dopnet's smoke object. So inside this dopnet, we need the smoke objects uh, sparse. And then the, for the fields to import, we want to once again bring in our density 
and our velocity. So now what we need to do is convert this to a VDB. Go over here and click VDB. And now we need to drop down a pyro bake volume. Now we have our smoke. So now we need to set this up in the out network and we need to put down a labs flipbook textures. So we want this to be exactly 64 frames. So let's go back to our smoke. Let's put down a time shift. And if you look here, there's nothing on the first frame and not really till frame three does anything really start to happen. So go to frames and just do plus three. That way at the very beginning, we have some smoke and there we are. Okay, so now we need to have a camera. So let's just make a new camera and the sprite sheet is going to take the resolution of the camera. So if you use this resolution, it's going to stretch your smoke. So what you wanna do is set this to the same number. Let's go to the last frame and we wanna get as close as we can here. Make sure it's centered. Okay, that looks good. So let's go into our flipbook textures and let's select that camera that we just made. Next, we need the pyro bake volume path. So let's grab that. When we bring this into Unreal, we're gonna need a material. If you click the real-time shaders, Unreal Engine content, plugins, and guides, it'll pull up all these different Unreal versions. Inside here, you can get the Side Effects Labs plugin. Copy this, and you're going to paste this into the plugins folder inside your Unreal project. This will give us access to some materials that will allow us to set up this smoke. Now let's export this. Inside here, we have our final color. This will be the diffuse of our smoke. We do not need the emissive texture because we don't have any fire or anything going on in here. MDC1 and MDC2 are lighting data baked into textures that we can use to light this smoke inside Unreal. Motion vectors will use the velocity data to interpolate between these frames, giving a smoother playback, and if we slow it down, we'll have a better frame rate. So now we're going to export this into our content folder of our Unreal project, and I'll see you in Unreal. I've created a folder called Smoke that has the textures that we've taken from Houdini. If you installed the Side Effects Labs content plugin correctly, you should have a folder here. Let's click it, go into Materials, Templates, and let's copy this M Template Pyro Advanced, and we'll take it back to our Smoke folder to begin setting up our smoke. Let's open that up. This is a material that Side Effects have created for us that we can use to set up our smoke, but we need to change a few parameters first. Right now it's using just the overall time of the scene to determine which frame it's playing through of our smoke sim. We need that to be relative, particle relative time. So let's take that and plug that into frac. Now we wanna have some control over the opacity in here as well. So let's make a dynamic parameter, set parameter to opacity. Let's put down a multiply Plug this into A, plug the endpoint into opacity. Then on depth blend, let's plug that into B and hit apply. Now that that's set up, let's go back into ground strike, open up strike, and let's just copy this sparks emitter that we've made earlier. We can use that to start setting up our smoke. We'll click the little isolation tab here, this little guy, and then right click this, and let's rename this to smoke. And now we need to put our smoke into the sprite renderer. But the first thing we need to do is go into smoke and let's make an instance of this material and open it up. Scroll down and you can see there's a place where we can put in those textures that we made in Houdini. So let's do that now. Final color, MDC1, MDC2, and motion vectors. Let's start putting those in.
You'll notice that nothing's happening here and our smoke isn't playing through. That's because it can't reference the particle's relative time in order to play through. So it'll start playing once we have it set up in Niagara. One thing I forgot to mention is when you import your textures, be sure to grab all of them, right click on them, and set scripted as asset action side effects flipbook textures. Do this anytime you're importing these different sprite sheets. One last thing is we should set up our lighting so that when our smoke sprite sheets spawn in our scene, then they will react to the lighting. So you can click on your light and I can see the location of my light is at 190, 960, and 1090. So click on your material instance and you'll see this Houdini FT MDC. Those are those textures that we talked about earlier. Under light world position, we're just going to put in where our light is. So 190, 960, 090. And now when our smoke spawns in our scene, it'll react accordingly. All right, so now let's get this set up in Niagara. Go back to strike. Smoke, and let's put in that instance. And you're not seeing anything because they're really, really small. So let's fix that. First, under alignment, let's set it to custom alignment. Let's go to spawn burst instantaneous and set it to be 20. Initialize particles. Let's set the sprite size mode to be random uniform, and we'll set it between 100 to 200. And if you see if we play through, we can see our smoke. There's this weird little bubble effect that comes up at the very end, like it's playing a frame or the first frame of the animation. We can fix that by putting down our dynamic material parameters. And under opacity, let's set this to a curve. And let's get these and set these guys to auto. Set these keys to auto. Make it curve just a bit. Now you can see that smoke is coming out of that point, similar to how we had the particles. But the problem is here, they're moving too fast. So we can change it with the add velocity from point. Let's set it to 50 to 150. We don't really want that gravity, so let's turn that off. All right, let's go to initialize particles. And right now it's going between a lifetime of 0.2 to 1. So let's change that to a lifetime max of 2. All right. Let's unsolo that and we can check it out. All right, now that I'm looking at this, these tendrils that we have going on, we should set those to be fading out a little bit. So let's look at those. Sorry, they're called Hilt. Go to Dynamic Parameters. And then under Glow, let's set this to Curve. And just like before, we'll add here, set this to 0.3, and then set it to 0.1 for Fade Out. Under Initialize Particles, let's set this to 0 0.2, 0 0.3. All right, let's check that out. Try just 0 0.3, 0 0.3. I think the problem is that under here, we need to set the first value to be 5, like we had it before. Yeah, that's looking better. Let's rename this so we don't get confused. Let's call it ground tendrils. Now let's watch this back. Okay, so this uh, lightning bolt, I know what's wrong with it. It has been set to multiple since we used it before. Let's set it to once, and then under spawn burst instantaneous, let's set that to two. And then under initialized particles, let's set lifetime to be 0.3. We want this to just come in once with two lightning bolts. Let's go into dynamic material parameters and let's set this value to be 10. There we go. 